The 7th annual Real Work May Day Labor Film Festival began April 20th. The festival features award-winning documentaries focused on the history of various labor movements worldwide and building community awareness around labor and economic justice issues. Among the film this year is Learning to Bend Steel, a documentary by UCSC social documentation graduate student Alex Johnston. Johnston's film focuses on the early work of recently departed legendary labor activist Archie Green and will be shown at Kresge Town Hall on May 4th. For more information on the films and where you can see them, go to realwork.org and admission is free, so check it out. A staple of downtown Santa Cruz for years, the mysterious Pink Umbrella Man has recently been absent from the sidewalks of Pacific Avenue. With various rumors as to what has happened to the Pink Man, Banana Slug News correspondent Raul Flores investigates the whereabouts of one of Santa Cruz's most notable residents. Not long ago, if you took a stroll down Pacific Avenue, you'd find one of the most notorious and deliciously stoic individuals in Santa Cruz, the Pink Man. But now all you find are high prices and a bad selection of goods. Now it begs to ask the question, where did the Pink Man go? How did you first come to know about the Pink Man? Um, he's just walking down the street. Well, he doesn't really do it anymore, but he walked down the street like every day. And you could kind of smell him from like really far away. <laughs> the first day I came to Santa Cruz for orientation, he was the first guy I saw on the street and he actually said hi and he was talking to me. He's really awesome. Um, people talked to him at school and then I came down here and I saw him and just kind of watched him walk, so. He's pretty unique. I don't know. He's kind of to himself and he's pretty nice to people, I guess. I don't know. I don't really know him that much. What do, you th what do you think of his disappearance from uh, the Pacific Avenue area? I don't know. It's been really strange. But I've heard that he's like some millionaire, like, <laughs> and he has like this huge house. So I'm, I think he's just like, you know, holding up in his shack. I haven't seen the Pink Man in a couple years, actually. I don't know what happened to him. I've actually been kind of wondering if he's okay or what happened. But I did have a theory that actually he might have um, come into some luck. You know, maybe he had finally another passion with his life, doing something else, maybe, instead of just hanging down here. And at least that's what I hope. I heard he was, like, beaten up, and then I heard he's also, like, really intelligent and he's smart. And I've heard all these stories once. I don't know if it's true, but, I mean, he gets a lot of crap down here, so I wouldn't really want to be around here all the time anyway. But it's, it's kind of sad. I used to really see him all the time, and when I bring kids I babysit down here, they always love to point him out, so it's a little sad. I think the pink man is a very obnoxious person who's extremely mentally ill, and it's sad, but I think he is always looking for ways to press, push himself upon people. Currently, he's pushing himself upon the Palomar Inn but, because he got evicted from there. Uh, before that, he was running around here, walking slowly up the street, and uh, you know he would do things like walk up to street musicians when they're playing and stand like in, in, invade their personal space and tell the street musician would have to move. Well, basically, when I was maybe 15 or 16, I was like, cool, this guy's all dressed in pink, that's awesome, kind of gay, kind of awesome. I tried to give him an awesome pink purse, and you know I'd see him again and again, and he never wore it, and he never said thanks, and he was quite rude and yeah you know I just don't like the pink guy. Him and I know a lot of the, the um, downtown businesses don't like him being around. Um, I guess he causes some issues with like the people the passers-by but I've never I don't know from what I've seen he's harmless. After conducting numerous interviews we found out that the pink umbrella man is not a beloved of character as we once thought him to be. We've even found out that there's a lot of disdain towards him floating around Pacific Avenue. In fact, our biggest break in the case came when we found out about his recent eviction from his home at the Palomar Inn. However, his true whereabouts are still unknown. This is Raul Flores reporting for BSN News. Back to you in the studio, Betsy. Some of you may be wondering why there are so many parents and curious-eyed teenagers roaming around campus in masses. The answer is incoming freshman tours. As letters of acceptance to UC Santa Cruz are making their ways to the homes of next year's freshman class, high school seniors and their parents are paying us a visit 
to decide if UCSC is the right university for them. The tours are led by current UCSC students and highlight some of the most important parts of campus. Student Affairs emailed the student body to encourage kindness and respect towards our temporary visitors whose shoes we were all in at one point. And this year was one of the hardest for undergrad admissions. So don't be shy about giving your welcoming regards to your future freshman and transfer student peers. If you or a friend are interested in more information on campus tours, go to admissions.ucsc.edu slash SEE. There has been growing competition for undergrad admissions due to budget cuts. Just within the last two years, the general admission rate has gone from 83% to 64%. No other UC has experienced this kind of dramatic increase in selectivity. So take charge of your education because you got lucky. There's no better way to grab your education by the horns than stopping by the UCSC Career Center. Receive individual advising, attend workshops and career fairs, get some valuable resource materials, browse job listings, and more. For more information, check out www.ucsc.edu slash careers. Since family student housing was created in 1974, rent has more than doubled while the quality of housing has deteriorated dramatically. Now UCSC officials want to further increase the financial burden for students with families seeking housing. Let's find out more with Corinne Warnsheis. Hi, I'm Corinne, reporting from family student housing on campus, where the proposed rent increase could cause some families to relocate which has some members worried about the community. Mothers, fathers, children, and couples are among those affected by the recent news from the vice chancellors that their rent will increase substantially in the coming months. Family student housing on campus has been a tightly knit community since its foundation in 1974. Some members, many with children to care for, say its existence is the reason they are able to attend school. They have mobilized and organized and say they won't sit idly by to watch their diverse and important community disappear. We spoke with some families to get their opinions. I've lived here for almost five years. I came in as an undergrad and now I'm a graduate student. It's really convenient um, and it's a really great community. I mean, the, like to be around so many other student families, everyone's going through the same thing, trying to make it through school, trying to support their families, and it just really helps to be around that kind of that atmosphere and to not feel like, because it's so hard to be a student and, a, you know, mom or a parent at the same time, that to feel like there's a whole community of them really helps. A handful of us started this tenants union and we've been having meetings. It was really great because it started off with a flyer saying, are you tired of your rent going up? You know, and it had these great graphs saying that our rent's gone up before the rent increase for this year, you know, considering the rent increase last year, rent's gone up 55%. You know, this year it'll make it 62%. And <clears throat> TA salaries have gone up 18%, and inflation has only been 23%. So we've been rallying support from not just family student housing, but the UCSC community and the local community um, to say, look, what's happening at family student housing is really unfair. We have the highest rents of any of the UC family student housing any of them across the entire UC system and that's and they say you know it's because we live in Santa Cruz but UCLA has cheaper family student housing than we do. UC Santa Barbara has has cheaper family student housing. Uh, UC Berkeley has cheaper family student housing. So this is not unique to because we have high rents in town or anything. This is just them raising the rent. We went and met with the chancellor and we told them our case. We said, look, for one thing, you need to provide affordable housing because it's recruitment and retention issue. Basically, it's like if you want to recruit quality students, you need to be able to provide them housing, you know. And especially if you want to promote, like the university has these principles of community, which says that it promotes diversity, it promotes, you know, support of, you know, various communities and, and you know, and it has respect for various communities. And so this is like, you know, we feel like our community at Family Housing is being disrespected by these rent increases. So we gave him that case and we talked about the budget and he was actually really supportive and we, he really listened and was like, look, this is a really important thing that we need to work on. The community is still unsure if their voices have been heard, but we'll find out in the coming months. 
That's it for this episode of Banana Slug News. To find out more, check us out online at www.bananaslugnews.org. Good, good news and good night. night.